Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm privileged to welcome not just a coach and someone who's a very senior professional, but also an author. And all of you know I'm very partial to authors, Katie Murray from the UK. Katie, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ashutosh, and welcome. It's lovely to be here. Thanks for your welcome. Katie is an author of a book titled The Change Makers, and we'll speak about that. She is a leadership coach. She's a diversity and inclusion consultant, and she's a business mastermind host. Katie has also been named one of the top 50 UK diversity and inclusion leaders. So Katie, today we're going to talk first about your book and then about diversity and inclusion. So let's start with your book, Change Makers. And I see you've got copies behind you. Yes, behind before me we, and here. <laughs> and you've got it there in front of you. So before we talk about your book, is it available on Amazon? Yes, it is. Find it okay. there. So uh, I'm going to check it out on Amazon and order a copy and I'll urge all our viewers and listeners to go to Amazon and check out Katie's book, Change Makers. So Katie, tell me about your book and your hypothesis to write it. Yeah, thanks. So I saw some data recently that 42% of women have experienced burnout in the last Mm -hmm. 12 months. Mm -hmm. And um, we know that burnout and overwhelm in the workplace is common, but that number has gone up significantly since the pandemic and globally. Mm -hmm. And we know it's gone up for men too, but particularly for women. So I'm really intrigued about that. Mm -hmm. And I've coached many, many leaders over the years Mm -hmm. and seen the impact of overwhelm and burnout in our lives. When we're passionate, we're ambitious, we wanna make a difference in the world, Mm -hmm. but actually how do we care for ourselves so that we also can be sustainable? So we wanna be change makers in the world and how do we connect with that to what's the difference we want to make but also how do we care for ourselves to enable us to center our own well-being in that Mm -hmm. so it's the inner work around what can I do personally to center my joy my own well-being to to help myself be as sustainable as possible Mm -hmm. and also it's the outer work what is the difference that I want to make in the world around me Mm -hmm. what are the workplace barriers that I'm going to navigate how can I disrupt that and create a more equitable society around me Mm. so it's the inner work and the outer work that I wanted to pull together in the book amazing amazing and you know when I was reading about you you also talk about powerful habits that will reshape Mm. the brain and shift behavior help me understand this and uh, possibly give me an example or an anecdote yeah sure so we are the we create our own lives don't we through the daily habits and the Mm -hmm. daily things that we do and we create our lives in in patterns Um, our brain works in patterns Um, and if you think about you know today let's use this example I know that if I go for a walk and get some fresh air get my heart rate up and you know look outside get some you know beautiful view in my mind that's going to help me feel better Mm. mentally physically even emotionally spiritually it's going to give me a boost Mm. do I do it do I take that walk every day? Mm -hmm, Like, mm -hmm. I know that that's good for me. Mm. And also there's a resistance to whether I do it or not. Mm. But actually, if I build that habit of going out and doing those things that are good for me, I'm going to build and make it easy for myself to do those things that are actually going to care for my body, care for my spirit, care for my heart. Mm. So I can build those habits into my life that I know will help me Um, To the extent that we have flexibility with our schedules and we have that choice, we can choose those habits that will that will um, help us. But initially, when we're saying I need to go for a walk, it's hard, right? Because we have a lot of resistance to doing that. Oh, my desk is calling me all the emails, Mm. all the things. Mm. We know it's good for us, but we haven't yet made it easy for ourselves. So I talk about power practices in the book and in my work, which are really small ways to build healthy habits in our Mm -hmm. day to day Mm -hmm. and these things do reshape our brain they reshape our neuropsychology Mm -hmm. they also shape reshape our biology to to an extent and the way that we think about ourselves and of course then that then affects Mm -hmm. how we show up and how we behave and how we lead and how we are with other people so that's why I was saying we start with that inner work. Mm. Some of those power practices are things that we can do individually for ourselves. So taking a walk as an example, but I would also say something like, how do I want to feel today every morning? How do I want to feel today? What are mm-hmm. the emotions I want to experience? Mm. I can prime my brain to 
if I tell myself I want to feel joy today, I want to feel expansive, I want to feel content, then my brain is already primed to look for those opportunities and to right. crucially enjoy those moments more when I do experience them. And we counteract the negativity bias in our brains and we really strengthen and build those neural pathways to find positive experiences in our lives. So it's not like a fake positivity, but it is a way of really relishing those good things that we do have in our lives. And that starts to reframe and uh, re rewire and reshape our brains. Amazing, amazing. You know, on a lighter note, Mark mm. Twain had said that every time I feel like exercising, I like lie down till the feeling passes. <laughs> so so uh, he was obviously not uh, listening to whatever you are saying of training your brain. Uh, well, but you know, I also love that because there's something in that too about if I tune into what my body needs, yeah. sometimes my body needs to lie down, I, right? Sometimes I, I need to rest. Yes. And so I wonder if actually Mark Twain was saying, yeah, do you know <laughs> what? I don't need to get my heart rate up. I need to rest. So I, I love that. He was tuning in. <laughs> I, so, uh, so, you know, uh, moving on, you also talk about uh, the need to clarify our purpose, increase our joy, boost our energy, whilst also managing to overwhelm and prevent burnout. Mm. Um, help me understand this comment. Yeah, so similar to what I just shared, uh, my belief is that our bodies and our energy is mm. such a precious resource for us, isn't mm. it? As leaders, as people that want to make a difference in the world, whatever your sphere of influence is, mm. you have so many resources available to you, or sometimes mm. those might feel constrained or depleted, mm. but your personal energy and the way you care for your body that is actually the essential. So when I made that comment about getting clear about what it is that we want for our lives, clear about what it, the contribution is that we want to make, mm. whether that's in our families, in our local communities, whether that's in our workplace, mm. whether that's national, international, whatever the sphere of that or the scope of that is, mm. we can get really clear about what it is that we want to be contributing to where we want to be mm -hmm. living our lives mm -hmm. and then that piece that I mentioned earlier about really sustaining our own energy I think about my own energy like a battery so if we can think about ourselves like our, our minds and our emotions and how we're feeling it through the day can be like a battery how topped up are we are we at 20 percent? are we at 80 mm. percent? Mm. how are we feeling at any given time mm. and you'll notice when you start to check in with that that it fluctuates through the day and some days it's higher some days it's lower different times of day and it will be different for each of us mm. but when we can tune into that and maybe even start to live a bit more according to that. So mm. a bit like the Mark Twain quote, I am going to lie down and take a nap mm -hmm. or I'm going to take a rest when I need mm -hmm. to. But mm -hmm. then when my energy's high, I'm going to do that work that needs my best thinking or my best connecting energy with others. So this is about how we work with our bodies mm -hmm. and find ways to feel as good as we can because we're mm -hmm. navigating systems that are you know, and maybe we'll get on to this in a minute, but are quite yeah. oppressive at times, right? So we need to, um, this is not about us being broken and needing to fix ourselves, mm. but it is about us knowing that we have our own inner wisdom, mm -hmm. knowing that our bodies give us data, mm -hmm. knowing the, the world, particularly again with women, the world wants to tell us that we need something external to ourselves mm -hmm. to be of mm -hmm. value. Mm -hmm. So actually this is about what do I have of value already that I'm already enough? Mm. I'm already of value and I already have wisdom that I can bring. How interesting. So Kerry, now let's talk about, uh, you know, your other passion or maybe it's your primary passion of <laughs> uh, diversity and inclusion. And you're one of the top 50 uh, leaders in the UK on this topic. Uh, let's start by asking you what got you interested in supporting a cause like diversity and inclusion? Well, I think it tracks back probably to very early days mm. of our lives. Often we can see that, can't we? When we look back, it's like, oh, what got me into this? There'll be some clues from mm. earlier on. If anyone listening in wants to find a bit more of their purpose or mm. get closer to what is their purpose, I'd really encourage you to 
look back at some of the threads through your life what are the clues mm. that might be there mm. I think for me I was very tuned into um even in like the school playground mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who's included who's playing with who mm. who's excluded mm. um I moved around for various reasons to lots of different schools so I mm -hmm. experienced being new and having to integrate into a new group and how that felt and how exposing that was and mm. sometimes being welcomed and sometimes being rejected so those kind of roots of thinking about inclusion and belonging it's there for all of us isn't it I think it was Correct. there for me at quite a young age mm. and then I was really fortunate to work um, in jobs and roles early in my career that mm. were global in their perspective so I needed to work with different cultures and understand people from lots of different perspectives and it really grew me and stretched me to realize there isn't always one story there's multiple stories mm. and there isn't always one way of doing things there's multiple perspectives and multiple mm. voices mm. and businesses and organizations are going to thrive and teams are going to thrive mm. when we're able to really tap into all of that diverse perspective that we can so I yeah I was clicked into that at quite mm. a young stage of my career which I'm really grateful for. Fascinating and you know uh, I've been speaking to so many people on DEI, DNI mm -hmm. uh, all over the world there is a lot of talk and uh, mm -hmm. a lot of action of course but I'd love to get your perspective on how much is actually being achieved. Yeah, it, I agree with you. There's a lot of talk and it's great that these conversations are happening. Okay. If I look back over, you know, 10, 20 years, it feels like there is more space to at least raise the conversation Absolutely. and to notice the things that we are experiencing ourselves in our own lived experience or seeing others experience and saying, this is not okay. We need to make this be different. Yeah. So I really celebrate that. And I, I think that's fantastic. I think when we hold power and when we hold privilege, and I say that as a, as a white woman who holds significant privilege, I'm able-bodied, I hold significant privilege from my social and economic background, mm -hmm. my support mm -hmm. for my family, all these things. And we each can notice and see the ways we hold privilege mm -hmm. in the spaces that we're in, in our different contexts. It can be really hard to see that though, right? It can be very hard to accept the privilege that we hold and the power mm. that comes with that and it can be very humbling and very disrupting to be asked to make a change so we're all very happy to talk about diversity equity, inclusion when it's somebody else right that needs to change Absolutely. and it's those people over there that need to yeah. sort their stuff out mm. it's much more challenging when we have those mirror moments and oh okay. it's actually about me and I need to do something different yes. that is very disrupting for us so this is where those power practices come in, actually, when we are finding equilibrium in our central nervous system, when mm -hmm. we are able to deal with that disruption and that discomfort and sit with it and stay curious. So I encourage my clients to notice and stay curious and that the data is there, right? That the, the issues are, the data is there, the research has been done, the issues are clear. There are areas that need more research, but mm -hmm. we know what some of the major areas of inequity are mm. in your own organizations for everyone listening in mm. you can have a look around and see who's included who's excluded who has a voice here who doesn't mm. you can ask those questions and start to disrupt and gently gently disrupt mm. those systems so when i see people do that i'm really encouraged right i i'm someone who's probably quite an optimist but i am really encouraged when i see people starting to ask the disruptive questions mm. and start to have those conversations. So yeah. that's because that's when the action's gonna follow is when mm. people are actually shifting head and heart. Mm. You know, hands and feet comes later, but head and heart are, are really the transformational mm. places for me. I'll give an example of a couple of organizations I've worked with recently where mm -hmm. senior men who held the powerful leadership positions, yeah when they were having conversations about their own power and their own privilege and the inclusive behaviors that they needed to start hmm. acting, that was when I was like, okay, now things may start to shift here. And when they were able to challenge one another and kind of call out one another, that's when things start to change. And also right. other voices are then, you know, will allow other voices into this space. And that's where things start to change. How interesting. How interesting. And based on all the work that you've done, which are some, what are some of the significant inequity challenges that uh, you can share with our viewers and listeners? Yeah. So 
if we think about how our world of work was designed and who it was designed for, mm. was it designed for you? Uh, you know, and we can each answer that for ourselves. Mm-hmm. Again, I've mentioned my own places of privilege. Most workplaces mm-hmm. are designed for able-bodied people. Let's use that example. Mm. So as an able-bodied person, I have never had to think about, can I even get into work? Can I access right. this workplace? Mm. I've just never had to think about it. It's not been something that I've neglected to think about it just hasn't ever had to come up for me Mm. um I'm in a heterosexual partnership in my marriage I've never had to think about is it going to be okay to display affection with my partner is my partner going to be accepted in this workplace Mm. culture Mm. if I invite him to join me at an event or something like Mm. that so these are examples of where I've where I've never had to think about something that's a point of privilege Mm. so we can all examine that for ourselves and you know we know the data is there that we know that people who are more marginalized due to their particular identities will experience more bias and mm. more barriers. They'll experience more microaggressions. Mm. You know, those, those moments where something really small happens, but then cumulatively that has a significant psychological impact for those individuals. We know the data tells us that that's happening yeah. um, in every context, in every sector. Mm. So this is not about, oh, is it really happening? Where's the information? It's like, no, it's happening. Mm. What can we What can we do about it? Let's notice it. Let's call it out. What can we do about it? Wonderful. And my next question to you is, mm. where does accountability lie for in an organization for diversity and inclusion. I mean, people say uh, at the top, people say the HR level, people say within each one of us. What are your thoughts? My thoughts are all of the above. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I see each of those approaches. I often HR, it kind of gets delegated out, right? And that's a way of avoiding responsibility, yep. perhaps for, mm-hmm. for some of those senior leaders. I think we need to hold our leaders accountable, of course. Mm -hmm. We need leaders to engage. Unless they do, nothing actually will really change. And again, it's not about saying, well, those people over there need to do Mm -hmm. something. There's Mm -hmm. definitely that space of like, well, what is it that I can change in my sphere of influence? Again, the family, community, school, you know, Mm -hmm. what are we teaching our kids in terms of anti-racism? What are we teaching our kids around um including people who are different from mm-hmm. us, you know, whatever mm-hmm. that means in, in our individual family. So it's, it mm-hmm. starts at all those levels where we each have yeah. influence. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a big answer, isn't it? We're all accountable, but I think this is a conversation <laughs> yeah. we can all, we all need to be part of. It's a bit like talking about the climate crisis, isn't it? And saying, well, those people over there need to do that. Yes, there are multiple actors who all need to act in particular ways, but also I need to make some changes <laughs> the answer is not why doesn't someone do something about it 100%. which is what i hear from a lot of people and and i often said I tell people it's not why does someone do say what can i do about it and then get on with it and we're shifting from passive into active there Definitely. aren't we and saying let me take some ownership here let yeah. me take some agency back mm-hmm. that i'm just one person this mm-hmm. is the whole premise of change makers but right. when we collectively who else can I start this conversation with? Mm. Who, who else can I start this action with? If you're cool. alone in an organization feeling like, oh my goodness, there's so many inequities, what can I do about it? Who can you start having the conversation with? Mm. There will be others who perhaps haven't spoken up yet. Yeah. Who can you, where can you find your people to create uh, some more energy around the issues that you care about? Yeah, I agree, I agree. My next question to you, Katie, is that based on all the work that you do, how does culture impact diversity and inclusion. And I wonder, do you mean, Ashutosh, do you mean workplace culture? Do you it mean- It could be workplace, it could be religion. International it could cultures, be, yeah. Uh, it could be, you know, elders and, you know, it could be yeah. societal culture, it could be anything. Yes, I think it's it's so key, isn't it? So, so I'll take this from two angles. I think uh, when we think about work, the workplace, our mm. workplace culture, how does it feel to be here? Mm. You know, what's it like to be around these people? Do mm. I feel like I belong? Can I speak up? Can I challenge? Can I share my ideas? Can I share my perspectives? Mm. Do I feel valued? Am I well um, rewarded for my work? Like those mm. kinds of questions. We're all asking those questions, aren't we? Whenever we enter any group or whenever we join a new team, mm. we want to feel valued. So that cultural piece is so, so important. Mm. And I think a focus on diversity is like, you know, who's in the room and what's the mix and what are, what's everyone's perspectives and mm. of course culture and religion and there's other aspects of our background our different perspectives on on who we are will come mm. into that I think when we focus on inclusion it's about 
how is our who who has a voice in this room Correct. around this table Correct. and and also who's not even in the room and who's not around the table so I think again our culture our religion our ethnicities well, of course will play into that and, mm. and where are there potentially barriers or biases that are excluding mm. some of those voices yeah and and then I, I quite often talk about belonging as well which is how do I feel here how can I thrive and again that those are really valuable valuable questions to ask one another in a workplace Perfect. context is like mm. or in your team like who do we feel like we belong and can really bring our best very interesting so time for two more questions with you of course uh, uh, my next question is about the younger people you know the millennials the gen z's who are now stepping into leadership roles in organizations mm, brilliant and, you know they, they actually bring in a breath of fresh air when, yes. when i talk to them about how differently they think from people of my vintage. My question to you is, how are millennials and Gen Zs changing diversity and inclusion in the workplace? Yes, yeah, so this is not my generation either. I'm probably in the sort of mid generation <laughs> okay. um, in this conversation. So of course, this is just you know my personal perspective on this. Yeah, and yeah. I know you're talking to lots of people who, who are you know, from this generation, mm-hmm. which is great to hear their perspectives. My sense is that this generation of course this is a big generalization too Mm -hmm. but this generation actually has less of the boxes and the labels and some of the artifices that certainly I'm in my 40s now certainly that 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 I had growing up I feel like those things a lot of those things have melted away and there is an acceptance of difference and an acceptance of um, fluidity actually and choice, Mm -hmm. which I've had to kind of unlearn and relearn in my life. I don't see that happening for those men and women I mentor who are in their Mm twenties or the teenagers that I'm seeing coming through. Mm -hmm. I also think there's, there is increased uncertainty and volatility in Mm -hmm. the world and complexity in the world that they are having to navigate as leaders. So I think there are just these increased levels of challenge Mm. that those leaders are needing to manage and and work with. And I, the last thing I'd say is I think there's like a frustration or they're less willing to tolerate Mm. things that maybe we've just assumed, well, that's the way it is. So when we talked about the climate crisis, for example, Mm. or, um, racial justice or what's any of these other kind of big global issues there's kind of less willingness to tolerate that's the way it is and I really right. see this passionate that's not okay which I love like that fuel of let's do something different I think mm. is really incredible and really powerful fascinating absolutely and you do know, you agree I, is that what I you see as well agree. I mean yeah. I, I see the younger people are coming in with absolutely no baggage. Everybody is equal. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they actually question people who think differently, which yeah, I which think is, is a very brilliant. powerful uh, quality that they have, which is they have the ability to say no. And why are you doing it like this? You know, mm-hmm. so just fascinating. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Kitty, my last question to you, and this is for the many, many people who will listen to our conversation. What would you say are three lessons that you would like our viewers and listeners to take away from our conversation? Okay, first one, you are powerful. Mm -hmm. So yes, we often are experiencing systemic oppression and barriers and issues, and you have agency, you you are powerful. Find support, get some accountability, find people around you to support you, that's number Mm -hmm. one. The change maker piece, you can Mm -hmm. make a difference for your own life, for your others' lives around you. You can do that in your own sphere of influence. And if you hold privilege, which you will do if you're listening to this podcast, um, you can acknowledge it. You can use that privilege to help shape a more equitable world around you for others. So step in it's actually step into your privilege there's you know rather than shame and blame it's like okay let me embrace this let me yeah. use this for others um in, in a humble way mm. and then the last one i'd say which is around the burnout and well-being piece is that you don't need to sacrifice yourself for the causes that you care about and the work that you're passionate about the workplace will squeeze all the joy and the juice out of us because mm-hmm. that's the way it was designed Correct. so we need to push back and counteract on that and we i don't believe we need to burn out and we need to um sacrifice ourselves mm. in those spaces it's it's essential that we center our own health and well-being that would be my oh, third how oh, wonderful katie on that note uh, and uh, your three uh, your advice 
which is, uh, you know, you are powerful, you can make a difference, step into your privilege. Thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank mm. you for talking to me about your book, Change Makers. Thank you for talking to me about your incredible and vast experience of diversity and inclusion. And uh, well, thank you for sharing such amazing examples and stories about your own journey with this delicate and yet critical topic of inclusion and diversity. Thank you again for uh, our conversation. Good luck with your book. Mm. And, Ashutosh, uh, thank you thank so you much. I've really enjoyed it and um, have a brilliant rest of your day as well. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.